Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about painting red colored skin like a squig. It can often be challenging. How do you highlight it? How do you shade it? Well, don't worry. We're going to get into all of that and I'm going to show you how with just a few simple colors you can make really dynamic eye-catching red colored skin that pops. So here we go. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique in learned Vinci V style. All right, so let's get right into it. The first thing and most important thing we do is choose our red. Now, in this case, I'm going to use Chimera the Red. It is a super red red. It is highly pigmented. It is super bright. Pick whatever red you want to be your base tone. You could use a more desaturated hull type red or anything like that. They're all fine. It's just going to be our mid tone. For our highlight, we're going to focus on sunny skin tone, and this is the magic. For our shadow, we're going to use dark brown ochre, but anything can work. The highlight is the challenge. We want to use something like a flesh color. When we get to the shadows, we could use that brown, or we could use a purple. That would be fine, a nice dark purple. We could even use a black, although black tends to work better on shadows for things that are inorganic, cloth or whatever. But browns, purples, blacks, heck, even dark greens can be great shadows for reds. But the sunny skin tone is where you're going to see the magic happen because it's going to act as a much more natural color to highlight the red. So step one is pretty straightforward when you're trying to paint a red skin tone and that's paint the thing red. Now here I'm working over just a standard zenithal prime. I didn't need to do a warm zenithal or anything like that. Uh, Chimera is pigmented enough. It's just going to turn the thing red. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and start adding in some shadow color. Now, I'm not just washing this squig all over because that puts a lot of shade and deposits a lot of shade on the top where I don't want it. And this thing's a big beach ball. We wanna get that color where it belongs, underneath. So I've mixed in a little of that dark brown ochre into the red, and we're just starting to sketch out some shadows. All right, seeing where do these shadows lie. So now we're gonna get the other side of him. And again, I'm just trying to find those areas where there's actually you know, where shadow would be found. Squigs are really interesting shapes because they are just beach balls with tails and teeth. But we'll do some human muscle structure later. Uh, but the key here is you want to create those natural shadows. And something like this dark brown ochre mixed in with some red or even just glazed on its own can really accomplish that. But now comes the challenging part. Shadows on red, like I said, are easy. You can use any of a host of colors highlights. Here I've mixed in sunny skin tone in about a 1 to 2 ratio to the red, so more red than sunny skin tone. And I'm just in laying down the initial highlights. Yes, it looks very pink. Stay with me. It's going to be okay. I mix in more sunny skin tone. Now we're about 1 to 1-ish. Again, these are all, you know, estimations. The first thing I'm going to tell you is when you're highlighting red, I don't want you to care about trying to necessarily achieve a smooth blend right away, unless you're very comfortable working with thick paint and wet blending. For the most part, I just want you to sketch in those ultra high highlights. Now it's mostly sunny skin tone with just a little bit of red. And I'm going to go ahead and really pop up just those tiny areas that are the most highlighted where I want to draw the most attention, the center of the face, etc. Then we're going to take that original mid-tone red, the red in this case, work it down into a glaze consistency, and just give a nice coat more or less over the whole thing. I'll leave the highest highlights untouched, but then I'll kind of feather it out over that area as you'll see. Why skin tone? Sunny skin tone is a mix of effectively orange and white. So it has the transparency of orange, but the pop of white, and it just feels like a more naturalistic color. Moving into these Caucasian skin tones for highlights allows you to achieve smoother blends easier and creates more naturalistic light situations in your red. It doesn't look as harsh as suddenly jumping to a bubblegum pink with using something like white. It's also much easier to blend down and to make sure that it fades into the existing red. When you glaze over it, it will give you a nice bright pop color. Now let's see that same process again, but this time on a more human figure, I guess. It's an ogre technically, but he's humanoid. Uh, here we have our old buddy Larry the Ogre. If you're a longtime viewer, you know Larry has been a guest star in many videos, and we went ahead and painted him red. 
I begin by hitting the undersides of the muscle structure in that same dark brown ochre red mix. And then again, now on all those areas I want highlighted, and we're gonna go big to start, we're working in that same mix. So we start with basically two to one red to sunny skin tone, then one to one, then one to two, right? So introducing over time more and more sunny skin tone. And I left in quite a long period here at the end where you're gonna see exactly how I futz with the color to get it balanced out. We're gonna do a future video on the magic of futzing with stuff, F-U-T-Z, uh, because I really think that that's the actual secret to high-end painting is just sitting there messing with stuff. But on the humanoid structure, you notice because there's a lot of these individual muscles, I'm just focusing a lot more always pushing the high highlights to the top of the muscle structure. And again, before I come in with my glaze, it looks like crap. That's okay. When you're working with red, you need to get comfortable with the ugly phase. The ugly phase is a concept in miniature painting that at some point in time, you're, throughout the process, your miniature is going to look, well, ugly because you've got a bunch of unblended uh, paints on there or the colors aren't all in balance yet or uh, maybe things are still too rough or sketched or whatever it doesn't matter the point is that red when you're especially when you're doing skin tone and trying to really push those highlights up to sell the contrast that skin requires you're very much going to have a significant ugly phase don't let that dissuade you. As you can see here, as I'm just continuing to push the paint around, it's fine. Because red is so naturally transparent, we can use it to our advantage. When we keep a very small amount of sunny skin tone in there and stick mostly to the red, and then thin that down to a glaze, which is pretty easy, we get a beautiful glaze that just makes the blend suddenly snap into place. And you can see I just keep working the lines, building in little half steps, and then going in with a glaze to smooth it out. That's really the secret. I make a little half step between the, the paint that I already have on my palette, smooth out the harsh line, and then go back in and glaze it into the color below, and rinse and repeat. And the fun part about this is when you're working quick like this at the end, once you have that initial sketch down going up into the super high flesh, you can now just work on those individual areas. And this is a great chance to really hone in those wet blending skills because you're working with that paint, you're working fast, you're working in a small area, you're just refining. And you can use that to get those nice smooth blends uh, real quick and real easy. So that's the secret to red skin tone. It's integrate uh, Caucasian flesh tone and then find a shadow color you like. Purple, dark green, dark brown, black, any of them will work. Build them up, don't worry about blending, and then glaze to bring them together. So there you go, I hope you liked that. If you did, give it a like, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions, drop them below. But as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.